like anybody can tell me what's the weakest force, what is one of the weakest force, thank you, what is one of the weakest forces we have on the planet, non-physical, anybody, just name anything. Anybody, anybody? Name anything. What do you, in terms of a weak substance, what is a weak substance in physical reality that you can, that you can think of right now? Lust. <clears throat> Say again? Lust. Lust. Lust, okay. That's, that's a desire, but I'm talking about more like in a, uh, in an atmospheric thing. You know what I mean? Like, uh, say again? Air, ether, what else? Things like that. Okay, we say air and ether. One of the weakest, the only thing weaker than ether and air, and those are very powerful elements. Right? The only thing weaker than them is gravity. Gravity is the weakest element or substance or agreed upon substance in existence. Why? Because it's not constant. It's agreed upon. We all agree that it exists, therefore it does. But to show you that it's not as powerful, if gravity was so ill, Right? When I drop this, I shouldn't be able to pick that up. You know what I'm saying? But I can pick it up very easy because it's a weak material. Or so it's a weak, uh, I don't want to call it substance for lack of a better word, but it's a weak substance. It's a weak element. Right? Another way that you know that it's weak is because the penis can rise to 90 degrees. See what I'm saying? With no problem. Right? There's not many other things in the universe that can do things like that, you have to understand. Therefore, gravity is subject to the idea or the perception of the person that is perceiving gravity in its immediate fashion, right? So if I was to take this thing and just throw it, right? Depending on the intent of the throw, right? And how hard I threw it and where I was throwing it will depend on how far and what type of impact this will have when it hits it. But I know when I throw it, it's going to hit something. Right? Therefore, gravity not only is inconstant and it's weak, right? It's also subject to change. You understand what I'm saying? Right now, the magnetic poles of this planet have shifted. The magnetic poles have shifted. So that means that what was once east in the magnetic pole is now west and, and vice versa. See what I'm saying? This is such thing as, when we get to the uh, thing I'm going to show you, Everything in this reality, again, is perception. So because everything in this, in this thing is perceived by the retina, right, or let's say by the cornea, what you have to understand is that everything that you are then processing is being processed by you, right, through a natural lens, right, which is the eye or whatever, but the retina, specifically the part, the dark cornea, that part of it is the same particle, right, that exists in what we call black holes and things like that. Because if it, it had to, it would have to be black in order for you to attract the image. Because if it was white, you would, you would be blind. You see what I'm saying? Matter of fact, there's a movie. There's always a movie. Y'all. There's always a movie. Always. Like, to the point I'm sick of it. Like, man. It is on that. There's a movie called Blindness. Yeah. Yeah. Right? About the end of the world, right? And everybody goes blind, but this blindness is not black blindness, it's white blindness. Meaning that you don't see, most blind people see dark matter. These people in this movie, all they see is white. So you know they don't see nothing. Okay? So again, this is the difference. Same thing in space. If space was white, you wouldn't see nothing. See what I'm saying? So again, they tell you that what? E <coughs> equals MC squared, right? Which means energy equals motion, constant, right? To the second power. So when we talk about spells and lies, this is the biggest one you could ever get. Yeah. It's a lie. And, and, and it's, it's such a lie, I don't even have to get deep. 
You know what I mean? Like you sometimes you get real deep in breaking this crap down. You mean I can get deep with this. This is just rudimentary stuff. One, energy is a constant, right? Motion is what? Physical energy. So you're really saying energy, energy. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Therefore, this part of the whole equation really can be bust down to E. Right? So remember, this is half the equation now. So this, all this now is BS, because you don't even need this now. So really what we're talking about is E. Now, we're talking about light, right? Light travels at what? 1,037 and third miles per hour, right? A light year is how long? But a light year is how long? Anybody? We're going to write them now and just throw out a number. Okay. Okay, 8,000. How many? 50 billion? Great. How anybody else? Anybody else? 7 million. 7 million? Okay. Light travels, a light year is 6 million miles. Right? But light speed is 1,037 in the third mile. Okay? So if they're saying that 6 million miles is one light year, right? And light takes 1,037 miles per hour to it take, right, to, to come down. <coughs> that means that the time differential between a light year, which is 6 million miles, and the speed of light, which is 1,037 and a third miles per hour, something is off somewhere. How could, if it take, like I said, if it takes 6 million miles for one light year, an earth year is 365 days. They're saying that a light year is six million, is equivalent to you traveling six million miles. So if you travel six million miles anyway, that's one light year. But if light is only traveling 1,037 and third miles per hour, they're not saying per second now, they're saying per hour. Meaning that in the course of one hour, your, this light will go this far. And in another hour, this light will go this far. And another <coughs> hour, this light, come on man, it don't work like that. How could, <laughs> <laughs> Let me make it even simpler. If light was so fast, how come it got to escape darkness? That would mean that dark moves faster than light, right? Mm -hmm. Because light got to escape it. So that means that light got to run a little bit faster to get out of something that already is. Okay? Therefore, again, when the eye attracts something, right, it's attracting what? Light? It's attracting image, it's attracting speed, it's attracting length, depth, width, and height, all at the same time, right? All at 6 million miles per second, okay? 6 million miles per second is how fast it takes for light to reach the eye. And it takes 6 million miles to make one light year. So if that's the case, how can light be traveling at 1,037 and third miles per hour? That don't make no sense to me. How could you be moving slower, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, than the actual substance of what you're calculating? It can't happen like that. Because again, light doesn't move faster than darkness. Darkness is the constant that light comes in and out of. Therefore, you are the constant that light comes in and out of. You understand? Does so everybody understand where I'm going with this? Yes, sir. So essentially, the real equation then should be E equals MP squared, which then equals D, which would be energy equals metaphysical, which then equals darkness. Or energy factored, this, is a, this could be a factor too, energy factored by metaphysics equals darkness, or at the speed of metaphysics <coughs> equals darkness. So, how do we translate that to our life? This is equivalent to you being the creator of jazz, the creator of hip hop, the creator of science, the creator of knowledge, the creator of whatever you want to say the creator of, right? You are, right? But, the part of you that can access that is tied up in this part which is the metaphysical part, which represents the unseen part, which represents the part that you can't necessarily put your hand on, but you know is there.